Well, this is a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Honestly, since I think all the way, all the way back like in 2014, I wanted to do this video. But it never happened until now. And this is a video of my history with video game consoles and video games in general. In this video, I wanted to talk about my history of like all the consoles of the big three. So I'm only going to talk about Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. So no Atari, no Sega, none of that. As those were all before my time. Along with saying my favorite genres and what I wish the video game industry would do in the future to make itself better and what the big free and other publishers need to get my attention and of course my money and later on i'm thinking about doing a top 10 of my most played video games because since november of last year i have a program called play night which i got which actually lets me track my total play time of video games i've been working on since november it still has a lot of work to be done, and unfortunately when I get to that top 10 video, it's most likely going to be inaccurate, because I'm talking about like playing video games all my entire life. I don't even have all the video games I've played listed on there, and I probably never will, along with all the accurate times too on it, but I'll try eventually. So, the first, the main focus of this video is I'm going to talk about the all the consoles, both handheld and um, home consoles, for the big free. When I got them... What do I think about them? And specs, sales, and all that crap. And like I said, it's just going to be Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. And I'm going to do it in order from the smallest to the biggest. So I'm going to start off with Microsoft, then Sony, and then Nintendo. Alright, so let's get this video underway with Microsoft. So of course, we start off with Microsoft's first venture into the home console industry. The Xbox which was released on November 15th, 2001. It, it ran from 2001 to 2009 when they supported it, and it sold 24 million units in its first run, which actually, believe it or not, was second place in Generation 6, which is very, very impressive for their first console to get second place, but when we get to it later, it's going to be kind of overshadowed by who was number one, and it's going to be quite embarrassing to say the least. So, the first time I've played with the Xbox was Thanksgiving 2001. I got for Thanksgiving before I went to my dad's family's house for Thanksgiving. And there, I played it like crazy the entire time. So, November 22nd, 2001 is when I first played it. And I remember the free games that my dad got when we got uh, Halo, Shrek, and Test Drive Off-Road Wide Open. And the Shrek game was the first one I played. And I played a lot of that test drive off-road game afterwards, too. And then eventually I soon got into the Halo, which still remains Halo is the only first-person shooter game I like. Now, for the system itself, it was very interesting. For all of you who don't know, since Microsoft is unlike Nintendo, which is a video game company, and Sony, an electronics company, Microsoft is a PC company, and they actually designed the Xbox off of computers. So it was the first console to have a hard drive. And due to how small games were back then, at least in my experience, it's like impossible to fill up your system in terms of like memory card storage. Like it's insane. And it's been a standard ever since with um, Xbox doing hard drives. Now all the other consoles mostly do hard drives now. And although it wasn't the first one to have online connectivity, I believe it was the first one to make it, like, standard, like, make it popular. Because many consoles tried before and they did not really do so well. So Xbox succeeded in that regard. And it was, I believe, the most powerful system in Gen 6. Now, for me personally, what I think of it, for a long time, I kind of was eh on it. The games were fine, but just really wasn't much into the system. Like, for one thing, which really annoyed me about the system when it first came out, was that intro at the beginning of it. That scared the absolute crap out of me when I first played when I was 8. And I'm not the only one that has this problem, too, because I've seen people talk about this, too, 
with the loud noise of the intro, the flashing lights, and made even worse because we put the system for several years when we had in my in our basement. Which, oh god, I hated going in the basement. It was creepy and horrible down there. And that made it even more terrifying. Yeah, that was pretty scary as a kid. And like I said, I'm not the only one that had this feeling too. I remember seeing people online throughout the year say the exact same thing. So yeah, they probably shouldn't have done that. So I kind of was eh on the console, and I also didn't like the controller, the um, the Duke I think it was called, or the Fatty or whatever it was called, it was like way too big, but then they of course made, it was so big, remember, they had to make a new controller specifically for Japan when the system came out, and it was so popular that people in America and Europe would import those con um, controllers from Japan to the point where Microsoft made that the standard controller, which is much better, but the only thing I don't like is they flipped the black and white button to the bottom instead of being on the top like the original fatty one. So I wish they kept that the exact same, uh, that would have been better. But now, years later, this originally, the Xbox was of the three of Gen 6, well, technically four, because you include the Dreamcast, but I'm not including that on this list. So the three between the Xbox, GameCube, and PS2, for a long time, it was my least favorite of the three. But over the last year or so, thinking about it, and think of all the games on it, I think it, at worst, is now tied with GameCube at spot, because I'm not going to say where the GameCube is right now. If anything, it moved over the GameCube now. But I'm not going to say where it's at till later on. So, Xbox View, for me, at first wasn't really good, but now it's gotten a lot better over the last year or so playing it again. And then after Xbox, we got to the next system, the Xbox 360, which came out in 2005 and was produced all the way up to 2016. It's still being supported, I think, in terms of like replacements and for Xbox Live, I believe, but I'm sure it's not going to be for long since it's been over almost six years now since it's been discontinued. It sold 84 million copies in units, which was last place just barely in Gen 7. Now, I first got the system on Christmas Day 2007, which was out for two years at, a, at that point. And the main reason why it took so long is because for anyone don't remember... Because, oh god, I remember those days when I was 12 when the system came out. The Xbox 360, the first like two years of its existence, had a massive hardware failure called the Red Ring of Death, where they did ma terrible design setup with the 360, causing it to like break much easier. It was so bad that they had to eventually make a new Xbox 360, which I got, the Elite which fixed all the problems, and they even had a three-year warranty just in case. And because of those screw-ups, I on purpose refused to get it for a while because I wasn't going to get the system if it was going to break that quickly. I'm sure all of you remember the Red Ring of Death videos, wrapping in towels and stuff like that. Oh my god, that was so bad when it came out. That was a very bad job they did at first. But eventually, Christmas 2007 came along, and just like the original Xbox, I got free games with it. I believe it was called Dead Rising, that zombie apocalypse game. It's in set in the mall. Didn't, not in the zombie apocalypse. But the other ones were Saints Row and Halo 3. Like I said, Halo 3. I'm a huge fan of the Halo franchise. I believe that was the first game I played on the 362. And Saints Row, which is a funny like comedic spinoff of like GTA. Which I actually might do a play for on YouTube soon. Since I now can stream with the 360. So maybe look out for that in the future. So yeah. Afterwards, and a whole bunch of other games, I started to do Madden on there because I used to be exclusively PlayStation for Madden for a PS2, but then I moved over to the 360 for Madden when I used to get them regularly. And a whole bunch of other games, GTA 4, 5, all, all four of the Saint, I mean Saints Row games, and a whole bunch of other ones too. Of all of the Gen 7s, the PS3, the Wii, and the 360... This is my favorite console of Gen 7. It's not even close. This thing is so fun. Unfortunately, I do not have my Elite anymore, 
we have a new one that we got in 2011. I still had the original hard drive from my Elite, but I don't know where it is, sadly, at the moment, which sucks because there's a whole bunch of Madden franchises from Madden 10 on there that would like to continue working on, but can't do it without that hard drive. So yeah, the 360 was a lot of fun. But of course, after Microsoft's original success with the Xbox, and then with the 360, although in terms of sales, it was last at the end, at the beginning, for all of you don't remember, Nintendo, I mean not Nintendo, Sony screwed up really badly with the PS3, giving the 360 a massive head start on them, which eventually PS3 fixed their fuck-ups and turned around, so now they took over in terms of sales at the end. But, just like how Microsoft, I mean, I'm Sony got cocky after the PS1 and 2 successes, they went all out in PS3 and screwed up. Microsoft had the exact same thing happen to them when it came to the next console. And that is the Xbox One, which came out in, no in um, 2013 as of this video. It's still being produced, but I wouldn't be surprised soon if it's canceled, but with the um, delayed production of PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I'm sure Xbox One will probably be still produced in some form still. It produced, officially, it only sold 10 million copies, but the reason why it's official is because since I believe it was 2014, Microsoft has never said how many units were sold, which we're gonna get to why later on. But it's estimated, this was back when I first made these um pictures back in um, November of 2021, it is estimated that they sold 51 million units as of 2021, which would put it third place of the four systems sold. So, yeah, downgrade immensely from the 360. Now, of course, for anyone might not remember when the free, I mean, Xbox One was announced, it was really really bad. For all of you don't remember back in the summer of 2013, the Xbox One launch was really bad. First off, they had the Kinect on it, which was forced on you. You were required to have it, it was bundled with it, and it cost $100 too because of it. It was $100 more for a feature that you did not, most people did not want. Two, it was going to have forced DRM on you, so you couldn't you get used games easier. You couldn't trade used games to your friends or let them use it and stuff like that. It was going to kill the used game industry. It was going to try and force digital games on you. And then with the Kinect, the NSA was able to spy on you. Yeah, that's all you need. Especially with the Edward Snowden leaks, I mean, leaks back in 2013. Yeah, no one wanted any involvement in that. And it was going to require always active internet. And if the console did not have internet connection within 24 hours, the system was going to be bricked. So if you were somewhere that had no internet, like Rich from Review Tech USA said, if you went somewhere like on vacation, you wanted to use this, unless you had internet within 24 hours, you could not use it. It was just a very, very bad launch. It was so bad that they were forced to like pretty much change all of those things. But unfortunately, I think it really did bite them in the ass still. And the reason why they won't admit the official sales is because they afraid it's going to be embarrassing for them to do that. Because I mean, like, like the estimated figures, 51 million after selling 84 million with the 360? Yeah, that's pretty bad, especially when you're second to last, I mean third to last, no second to last in sales for Generation 8. And only because Nintendo had to make a new console because of their screw-up. So yeah, that's pretty embarrassing for them. So, because of their screw-up with the launch of Xbox One, and of course changes in what I like in video games from 2007 to 2013, I never got the Xbox One. I never had an interest to it, into it, and I only played it one time, I believe it was back in 2017 when I was at Best Buy, they had it out for like a demo, like to play games where you go to Best Buy and all that. I don't remember what the game was, but for some reason, I couldn't play it. Um, Every time I would, whatever this game was, no matter what button I would press, nothing would happen except pausing the game. Like, literally nothing would happen. It wasn't that the game was frozen or the system was frozen. It was working just fine, but outside of pausing and unpausing the game... Literally nothing would happen on screen. So, that was my experience with the um, system, sadly. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a very, very poor opinion 
of the Xbox One, mostly because of their released. I mean, how they um launched it at first, because that was very, very bad, and no one should ever defend it, because it was really bad. And then we wrap up the Xbox Series with the Xbox Series X, which was released back in 2020. It's as of September 30th, 2021, and I just looked it up. These numbers are still act, um, up to date according to Wikipedia. It sold only 8 million units since September 30th of 2021, which puts it second place in Gen 9. That was a screw up in terms of the type in saying second Gen 8. So... I don't really have much to say about it, just like Xbox One. I don't actively hate it like Xbox One because of the launch. It didn't have the bad launch that Xbox One had, but I just don't have interest into it. Like, there's just probably no games in that I'm interested in whatsoever. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. So, as you saw with the um, series, you went from Xbox, which at first I was not really much of a fan of but then eventually later on I grew more fond of it 360 I love Xbox one I hate immensely and the series X I'm just completely indifferent of so yeah that's not a good sign for Microsoft to have a peak and then massive decline afterwards for me but that is Microsoft what about the next one Sony well, we're going to get to that now, but we're instead of going for the home consoles, we're going to do their two handhelds first. All right, so we start off with the first of the handhelds, and that is the PSP, which was manufactured from 2004 to 2014. It sold between 80 to 82 million units, which was last place in Gen 7 when it came to handhelds. But you know what? For their very first handheld... That amount of sales is astonishingly impressive. That is insane. That it sold almost as much as the PS3. That is crazy. So I got this thing back in November 2005. And it was just two games I had with it. King Kong and GTA Liberty City Stories. And <clears throat> I loved this thing. This thing was so cool and so fun. And if it wasn't for one thing, which I'm going to be talking about later when we get to it, this would be my favorite handheld of all time. But sadly, it's second by just being edged out, even though almost all the games on there I like more than the game, the system that it lost to for my favorite. Now, there were some problems with it, of course. One, the disc, I mean the UMDs, because the PSP used discs. As mediums for the um, games instead of cartridges. And um, discs just don't work well with handhelds. You tried accidentally dropping this thing compared to like any of the Nintendo stuff. It's almost guaranteed it's going to freeze. Whereas um, Nintendo stuff is not as likely. It's not a smart thing on their part. But I will give them credit for one thing. Putting that cover over the disc itself except for the one part. I wish all discs would have that like as a like a feature. That would be really nice if all discs had that. And I did not like the the um, analog stick on the PSP. It felt very uncomfortable. And unfortunately, mine broke off sometime soon afterwards. And honestly, depending on the game, it actually felt easy. It was easier to play with it just being a little teeny tiny stick you can move up and down. Depend on the game and such. But yeah, this system was just awesome a great amount of fun with it and then we get into its successor the playstation vita which was made from 2011 to 2019 it just like with um xbox one never being told how many they sold officially microsoft I mean sony did the same thing for the ps vita so it was estimated that it sold 16 million units which put dead last in gen 8 which is quite a big drop off from the PSP. So you gotta wonder what happened. Unfortunately, as much as I don't really want to admit it, the main reason seems to be is that it was like a, it's like a um more powerful um handheld like to compared to its competitor, the 3DS, so it could play like AAA games. But unfortunately. Th Handhelds are just not really into like AAA games pretty much, especially since this was at the height of like the mobile game frenzy. So that really unfortunately killed its sales. It really did not do well, but 
Microsoft, I mean, Sony, to their credit, supported for this long, and it was actually pretty big in Japan still, since they poured over a lot of visual novels on it. I never got this thing, because it just really had no interest in it, but I did play it one time at GameStop. It was fine, I guess. The one thing, though, that's wrong with it is the, <clears throat> is the pri um, proprietary memory cards they have. So instead of it being like with all the other systems, including, I believe, the PSP, where it was like a um, micro SD card or an SD card, it had their own pri par I mean, proprietary memory card. So you had to actually get it from Sony. So guess what? Now they don't support Vita anymore? Guess what? Those memory cards are going to probably be very difficult to find in the future. Which is why you should never do that when you do something like this. Don't ever make memory cards like this proprietary. Make them so anyone can use any memory card in the future. You got to think about game preservation in the future. Like, that was really stupid on their part, especially when they cost so much, too. But other than that, I have no real idea about the Vita, since I only played it one time. Now, that's it for the, the um, handheld. The PSP, I loved it. The Vita, I have really no clue about. But now we get onto the systems itself. And we start it off with, of course... The PS1. It was first created... I'm going to talk the story about this. The origins of the PlayStation, how Sony got into the video game industry, is a fuck-up on Nintendo's part. So, back in the 80s, the creator of the PS1, Ken Kugaragi, saw his kid playing the, S I mean, um, the NES, and he did not like the sounds that came out of the NES. So he actually designed his own ch sound chip behind Sony's back. And all of Sony pretty much was against him, except, like, the main person that r ran the CEOs. So, so they actually went into um, Nintendo and offered a deal where when they made the SNES, they would use Sony's sound chip for it. So, the deal happened, and so and SNES has that chip from Sony in them. So, afterwards, Sony and Nintendo came up with a deal that they would make an add-on to the SNES called the PlayStation. Now, it was one, I mean, two separate words. It wasn't the same name as it is now. And it was going to have, it was going to be the SNES with a CD-based add-on called the PlayStation, which allowed Sony to play, like, their games on stuff like that. Unfortunately, the deal fell through because Nintendo did not like the, some, a lot of the terms on the deal, and they broke off of it very soon afterwards, when it was announced, and Sony was so mad about this um, deal breakup that they made the PlayStation as a fuck you to Nintendo. And unfortunately for Nintendo, it was definitely their biggest mistake, as the PlayStation has pretty much dominated them and the entire video game industry ever since. So, as you see, the PlayStation 1 was made from 1994 all the way up to 2006, and it sold 102 million and 49,000 units which made it number one in gen 5 to the point where I think it sold more copies than all of the other gen 5 systems combined like it just blew out everyone else and they weren't the first to do this but they made CDs the main medium for um, video games for a really long time and that was as much I hate to say it because I prefer cartridges over disc it was a smart move because discs at the time were cheaper and they can store more um, data than cartridges. So, the ten, I mean, Sony had an also big boost when it came to that. So, of course, I don't know when I got this because I was way too young to remember, but I'm pretty sure it was sometime in the 90s. I had, we have the original, no, not the original, the newest model of PS1 because it was, other than the PS1 which was a whole new variation of it that was released in 2000. The original PlayStation, as you see right there on the screen, it had three variations of it, and you could tell from the back with all the outlet I mean, outputs in it. We have the latest, the last one, which I think was made in 1999. So, that's when we probably got this. And I love this thing. Now, it did have that scary um, intro, like um, Microsoft, but it didn't bug me as much, since I didn't get to really see it as much when I turned it on for some reason. And I just love this thing. I've mentioned it before when it comes to, like, um, PS1 and 64, but I love those low-poly 
graphics of like the 90s systems those look so cool to me and if i ever made a game i would probably replicate that as much as possible because i just like that that those graphic models is the coolest graphic set ever and of course i love so many games on this now the fr there's technically three games on this list that of the system that i love the most you haven't seen me played one of them yet though but two of them you have seen me played are Bugs Bunny Lost in Time and Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue. Those I played the most on the system. And the other one was Game of Life, the 1998 version of it. I played that religiously too. Those games were fun. I did not play pretty much any of like the uh, main selling games on the PS1 because those weren't really my thing at the time. Plus I was too young so they probably would not interest me since most of those games were for like teenagers at the time. But yeah, I love this thing. Love the PS1. But then we go on to its successor. The PlayStation 2. Which was released in 2000. And it was supported all the way up to 2013. And it sold 155 million units. Which not only is number one in Gen 6. But the highest selling video game console of all time. And I think even when it comes to handhelds too. This is the highest selling console ever, and I don't think it's going to ever be beaten because of how huge it was. To put it into perspective, it destroyed the GameCube and Xbox sales by like three, maybe four times for cry out loud. Like this blowout was even bigger than when PS1 was released, I believe. Like this was just insane when it came out. As... The main reasons why it was so successful, one for me is it had backwards capability, so you could actually play PlayStation games on this, which was a first for me, so that was really awesome, and when I played it, I actually played a lot of it too, just to play the older games. And, I don't really like this, but it did have CD and DVD support, so that also made it more appealing to non-video gamers to get it, so they could listen to music and watch movies on it. So that helped, but I think overall that's a negative in the long term because that really screwed over how the video game industry should be done, as we saw with Microsoft, with um, Xbox One. But anyways, I finally got this thing in May or June of 2002, and that was mostly because of Monster Jam Maximum Destruction, which was the first Monster Jam game ever made. Because remember, it, it was released for the GameCube, PS2, PC, and Game Boy Advance. Now, it came out for Game Boy Advance first in March of 2002, which I picked up while we were in Florida for vacation around the time World Finals 3 happened. But it wasn't going to come out for the PS2 until June. So that's when we got then. So when we got it, we got free games for it. GTA 3, some Mini Cooper-like game, I don't remember what it's called, and I can't remember the third game. But then sometime afterwards... I finally got Monster Jam Max Destruction, and I loved that game. That's my favorite Monster Jam game ever, even though it had literally nothing to do with, like, Monster Truck Simulation whatsoever. So, yeah, I love this thing. I love that I was able to play PS1 games on it, and I loved a lot of the PS2 games on it. Although, for some reason to me, I didn't enjoy all the games as much as, like, I did on the PS1, sadly, for some reason. But this was my main console for... The generation when it came to like um um crossovers this is where i got into madden's pretty much this is where i got into gta with free vice city and san andreas and of course i got into the sly cooper series which i love immensely but other than that most of the other games were just okay at most other than Monster Jam Max Destruction, of course, there was also, I got Urban Assault, the Monster Jam 2017 game, and 4x4 Masses of Metal. But those were nowhere as good as Max Destruction was for me. And most of the games left were either tie-ins for, like, movies, like Shrek 2 and Shark Tale, and, like, nothing else, really. But other than that, I still love this thing so much. It is well-deserved to have the highest-selling units of, I mean, games, I mean, systems of all time. 155, that's still incredible. Like I said, that's probably never going to be beaten. But like, but I will say this, if you ever get this thing, do not get the slim, which you see on the right side of the original PS1, I mean, PS2. The slim version sucks ass. I've had it, it just sucks. Just only get the original if you can. So now, let's get on to the successor, and oh boy. 
And that was the PS3, which was released in 2006 and was supported up to 2017. It sold 87.4 million units, which was second, just barely second place in Gen 7. But this was actually a disappointment for Sony. Now, remember what I talked about earlier when, um... After the great success Xbox and Xbox 360 had that Sony, not Sony, Microsoft, had gotten really arrogant and cocky with um, the Xbox One release that they fucked up really badly with it? Well, that happened to Sony when it came to the PS3, which led to X, me, Microsoft having their cocky moment. So anyways, what happened was, when the PS3 came out with the enormous success of PS1 and PS2, they went all out in the PS3. Like, the one thing, the um, big problem with the PS3 when it first came out was that it honestly might have been too powerful at the time. Like, it had, what was it, like a, a very unique, like, graphics processing, I mean, GPU in it that was, like, so advanced or something like that that game developers did not know how to use it or something like that to its fullest extent. And the most expensive model with the biggest um, hard drive space, it was like 599 bucks in 2006, which I don't even think consoles are even getting to that number right now, 15, 16 years later. And the funny thing was, as much as people gave shit for it costing that much, it actually was lower than it should have been. Micro I mean, Sony actually sold the PS3 at a loss. It turns out the system actually cost almost $1,000 to make. So we got for like almost half off of what was normally supposed to be. And the reason why it was sold at a loss was an idea that Sony does, which a lot of companies also do too, where they'll sell products at a loss and they hope that they'll make up with the sale when it comes to like software sales. They hope they thought that the, um, if they sell it at a loss, people still get it and they'll make the money up, recoup it in software sales. But unfortunately for them, it did not work out as planned. And for the first three years of the console's release, it just did not work out really well. So if, I think like in 2009, they made a slimmer version and they cut the cost down dramatically and it helped them. And so, my, Sony, to their credit, they pretty much saved themselves and the PS3 and allowed them to not only sur come, make a comeback, but actually beat Microsoft at the end. Because that led to Microsoft cocky moment with the Xbox One. And now it led to Sony being cocky once again with their current stuff. So yeah. When we first got this, we got this in November of 2007 for my dad. Because remember in 2008, GTA 4 was going to come out. And I was going to get it for the 360. But my dad and me, since we're huge GTA fans, we did not really want to share the game. We, I wanted to play it like religiously. He wanted to play it religiously. So he got the PS3 just so he could play GTA 4 on the PS3 so I could still play on the 360 without a problem. But other than GTA 4, I think we only got one other PS3 game and that was Motor Storm, which I loved playing the demo of it like at GameStop and Best Buy and all of them. But when we got it, it just was like too hard for me and I didn't really enjoy it as much. So when I played a little bit of it, a little bit of it before we got rid of it, I did not like this thing. I did not really like any of the games on it. If anything, the I played it more to play PS1 and PS2 games on it, believe it or not. Yeah, I played the older games on this more than I played the PS3 games. So yeah, I did not really like it. And this last July, I actually got a PS3 for the first time. Because I was going to plan on doing a Sly Cooper Fusion Times playthrough. And such like that. But unfortunately, I played for a few hours on the system because I had Madden 16 as well. And then I had it in my um, cabinet till this last December when I got Motor Storm again. I was going to play it. But unfortunately, the disk drive died. And it sucked up all my games. And I had to literally open it up to get out all the discs that were in it. And I had to put it back together. And I didn't do a good job putting it back together. And the disk drive still doesn't work. So... I, it's now broken. So, yeah. My experience with the PS3, as you can see, very, very bad. And I just don't like the thing whatsoever. It just was not a good system. I'm sorry. It just isn't. The only thing that was good about it was, of course, being able to play PS1, I mean, PS1 and PS2 games on it. So then after that was the PS4, 
which was released in um, 2013. It's still being produced, although I'm sure it's not going to be the case for much longer. It has sold 116.4 million units as of June 30th, 2021. I just looked it up. It's still the case. And it's the number one selling system as of Gen 8. But I'm sure it might be overtaken by the Switch if the, say, if the rates keep going up in the future. So we'll keep an eye on that. So, of course, the Sony... The on PS4, Sony needed PS4 to succeed because for all of you didn't know, Sony was on the verge of like bankruptcy after the um, problems with the PS3 and their other brands. So if they didn't get, if PS4 didn't go off like crazy, they would be really bad, I mean, screwed financially. And thankfully for them, they learned from their mistakes from the PS3 and also because of Sony's, I mean, Microsoft's fuck up with the Xbox One launch. Sony took great advantage of it, and they appealed to the anger that the Microsoft community had from Xbox One, so they had a much successful launch in comparison. And that's why um, PlayStation 4, outside of the Switch, has outsold Xbox One and the Wii U combined by almost two times the number. It is just insane. But not surprising here as you see the history with the systems where um, PlayStation has been the number one selling console of each generation other than free. Like, that is just insane. Now, when it came to this for myself, my dad got this for Christmas of 2018, which came with Red Dead Redemption. We got a couple other games for it, but I mostly just played it only for Madden 18 on it. And although the system itself was fine... I just really didn't have much interest in it, other than Madden. And one thing I'll say is, I fucking hate the controller. I hate that controller that comes with the PS4 so much. I loved the PS1, 2, and 3 controllers. Why did they redesign it? It's just so bad. I don't like the directional pad. I don't like the buttons for X, square, triangle, and circle. I don't like the... um. The analog sticks, they don't feel right. I don't like the um, L2 and R2 buttons, like, drooping down instead of pushing in. It feels so terrible, like, times I feel like I'm not pressing on it. I don't know why they removed the start and select button and replaced them with the um, options and share button. I hate that feeling. I don't like the PS button, and I don't know why they added a touchpad to it. It didn't fucking need it. So, yeah, of all the controllers I've used... The PS4 is my most hated controller ever, and I hope to never use it again. That thing was a piece of fucking shit. Oh, God. That really hurt my um, appeal to the PS4. But otherwise, just had no real interest in it, into it. And then we got rid of it this last August so I can get my Switch so I could stream with it. So, yeah. That's my experience with the PS4. Just, eh. No real interest into it. With a very terrible controller as well. And then we wrap up the PlayStation with the PS5 which was released in 2020, and as of September 30th, 2021, it sold 13.4 million, which makes it first place in Gen 9, but I'm sure the numbers are lower because of COVID, because of the um, limited production capacity to make the thing. So, yeah, I don't really have interest in this thing at all. Literally have it, and I've never even played it once. Never even seen it to even try playing it. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. So that's it when it comes to PlayStation. As you see, when it comes to the consoles, I love PS1, I love PS2, I did not like PS3, and PS4 was just eh, and I don't give a shit about PS5. Since the trend here, I'm sure you've noticed, hmm, the older systems you like, but you don't like the newer systems. But we're going to get to the final one, Nintendo. And oh boy, this is going to be a long and interesting run. So here we go, once again, starting with the handhelds. So the first handheld for Nintendo... Although I think it was Game & Watch, this was the first one that came to being an actual mainstream console for handheld. And that was the Game Boy, which was manufactured from 1989 all the way up to 2003, which is the longest lifespan of any cons um, handheld. Mostly probably because of the Game Boy Color, which was released in 1998 during the Pokemon fad, which greatly boosted and saved the Game Boy for a long time, for several years. In the end, it sold 118.69 million units, which was first place between Gen 4 and 5. As the Game Boy made handhelds pretty much mainstream, and it was technically 
very weak compared to its competitors, but because of its low cost, um, very impre impressive games li I mean, game library, and back in by Nintendo, it just destroyed everyone despite its technical lim limitations. As this was the very first console I ever, I ever had with the Game Boy Color course. And that was when Pokemon first came out. Because I wasn't, I remember the Pokemon fad in the late 90s, although I was on the younger side of the Pokemon fandom at that time. But the first game I had was Yellow, and I got my Game Boy for that. And. I think it was at KB Toys when it was back when I lived back in Woodlawn that they had a special Pikachu themed Game Boy, which I had with Yellow. And I had that thing all the way up to 2008 when it was sadly stolen along with almost all my Game Boy stuff. Sad. But yeah, I loved this thing. All of Gen 1 and Gen 2 of Pokemon, all of the other games with it, it was so incredible. And I like the design of the handheld. Just straight up, simple, small in your hand that could fit in your pocket. I wish handhelds would go back to this design. That would be nice. Now, of course, most of my feelings of it are mostly biased towards the Game Boy Color because I never played the original Game Boy. But from what I've seen from the original Game Boy, not as good. One, I believe it was a battery hog. The um, Game Boy Color, I believe, only took two AA, I mean, two batteries. I think the original Game Boy took up to four. So that's not really good. There was something else wrong with the original Game Boy that I didn't like, but it wouldn't come off the top of my head. They actually made a couple of unique designs for the Game Boy. I believe they were only released in Japan, with one having a backlight or something like that, because that's one problem with the Game Boy, is that it had no light support. So if you wanted to play at night, you had to turn on the light when you played, because you wouldn't see otherwise. So yeah, I love this thing so much. I love the Game Boy. It is just so awesome. So after that, we get to its successor, the Game Boy Advance, which was released in 2001 and it was supported up to 2007. It sold 81.51 million units, which is first in Gen 6. Since it had no competition, actually, since the PSP and its successor DS were for Gen 7. So... I first got this thing in July of 2001, which is around the same time I believe it came out in America. And just like with Yellow, I mean the Game Boy when it came to Pokemon, I got this thing because of Pokemon. Because it came out in America around the same time as Pokemon Crystal was released in America. And they had, I don't know if this was just me being lucky, or if it was a whole thing across the nation. But they had this thing at Best Buy or KB Toys or wherever I was at. They had a bundle where you could get Pokemon Crystal... With a special Pikachu Pichu themed Game Boy Advance. And that's what I got. And I had that thing all the way up to 2008 when, like I said, it was stolen. Now, in terms of the design, I like the design for the Game Boy Advance. Although it kind of was a little too big. Because I don't, I don't like handhelds when they're like sideways and wide like the Game Boy. I like them nice and small and compact like the Game Boy. Much preferable in that regard. But I did like the design of it. The buttons, other the only thing I didn't really like in terms of the buttons was the um start and pause. I mean st start and select since they were kind of small. But other than that, the system itself I liked. Although a lot of the problems also from the Game Boy were still here, and they were mostly fixed when they released the SP. Because the SP, if you want to play Game Boy Advance games, the SP is vastly superior in this regard. The same clamshell like um. Small design like the Game Boy, backlighting, rechargeable batteries, very superior compared to the original Game Boy Advance. But this one is mostly about the Game Boy, it's the Game Boy Advance itself. Now, the system itself looked cool, and it was fine, but other than Pokemon with um, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green, I did not really like the games much on the Game Boy Advance. It's like the only system I believe on my list where I liked the system, but not the games other than Pokemon. So, yeah, when it comes to the library of all the handhelds, it has the worst games in my experience when it comes to this. But the system itself is fine. It was just mostly the games. So, because of that, I mostly played the Game Boy Advance more to play my Game Boy games, other than for um, Gen Free Pokemon. So, yeah, unfortunate for the Game Boy Advance to not do so well in that regard. But it was a cool system, I'll give it that. So, then we get to the DS 
which was released in 2004 and was supported all the way up to 2013. It sold 154.02 million units, which is number one in Gen 7 when it came to handhelds. It is the number one selling um, handheld console of all time, just being edged out by the PS1, I mean PS2, by less than a million units for the highest selling system of all time. This is the number two system we're talking about right here. That is insane. So, originally, the DS was originally made to be a complementary system to the Game Boy Advance. But it ended up beating it and overtaking it as the main system for Gen 7 for a DS. Unfortunately for the Game Boy. It even had a Game Boy slot on it too, so you could play Game Boy Advance games. Sadly, no Game Boy games though. So, this was, aw this was a really great system. All the problems from like the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance were fixed on here. Rechargeable batteries, backlighting, the buttons were pretty much good. I like the original um, push button to start to turn on the system in the original DS compared to the DS Lite, which is a slider on the side. I did not like that. But the buttons themselves were pretty good, especially the start and pause button in the original. I don't like the start and pause button just like I didn't like them on um, the Game Boy Advance for being so small. So we got this thing... Pretty soon after it came out, I think it came out in the fall of 2004, and for anyone that played this back then when it came out, I don't know if it's just me, but I think for like the first few years from like 2004 to 2006, I feel like most of the games on it were mostly games that were originally made for the Game Boy Advance that got ported over, because a lot of those games in my experience that I played during those first few years did not play well really on the DS. Like, they weren't really suited for the um, touch screen at the bottom. And the graphics on them, they looked just like a Game Boy Advance game, just ported over. It was when they got to 2007 onward that the games largely resembled like an actual DS game to its fullest extent. Being able to use the touchpad and with like 3D graphics, which the first bunch of years did not support. So yeah, remember when I said earlier too that if it wasn't for one thing, the PSP would be my favorite handheld of all time. Well, this is it. The DS is my favorite system of all time. And the main reason why is because of Pokemon. All of Gen 4 and Gen 5. Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black, White, Black 2, White 2. The peak of Pokemon before its decline was right here on this system. And it was just awesome! Fucking great. And of course, there's also Nintendogs, which I played religiously for like a whole entire year from 2005 into 2006 before Pokemon came out on the DS. I religiously played that game like every single day. And then like all the other free um, DS games I had on it were just so awesome. But despite them being awesome, I still like the PSP games more. And if it wasn't for Pokemon... I would say I like the PSP more than the DS, but because of Pokemon being on the DS, the DS became my favorite system for handheld of all time because of that. So yeah, the DS was so cool. Absolutely great and well-deserved for being the highest selling handheld of all time. And then we get to its successor, and although I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, Ew, you didn't include the Switch Lite to the handheld, this is the last official handheld for Nintendo, since I consider all the Switch ones to be a home console, even with the light. And that is the 3DS, which was released from in 2011 and was produced up to 2020. And it really and it had 75.94 million, million units sold, which was number one in Jan 8. But unfortunately for the 3DS, at the start, the first like three years, it, went, it had a poor launch. Like it did not sell well whatsoever. And also, and along with the Wii U, it caused Nintendo to be in a financial hurdle during the early 2010s. Like, they were in a really bad shape like Microsoft was at the time. I mean, Sony was. And the reason why I think it was because of the gimmick. Because it's called the 3DS because it had 3D capabilities. Like, actual 3D where you didn't even need the 3D glasses for it. It had a slider which allowed you to turn the 3D on and off. But other than that, it was like a normal 3DS by and large, so it was like a gimmick system. It was kind of stupid. And that's why I think it sold so poorly at the start. But then, I think mostly because of Pokemon, although I've seen a lot of people disagree with this. When Pokemon came out for like X and Y, that's when I noticed the system started to sell much better afterwards. 
Because you know Pokemon is a franchise you know, system seller. So yeah, I got this thing in November 2013 because, like I said, of X and Y. I had to wait a whole entire month before I can get it though because we didn't have the money at the time, sadly. But yeah, all the games on with um Gen 6 and 7 for Pokemon and all the other Nintendo games that they had pretty much on it, I loved the 3DS's games. The games were awesome, but it's a reverse of the Game Boy Advance where I liked the system, but I didn't like the games. I love the games, but I don't like the system. I don't like the 3DS whatsoever. I think the 3D effect, the um, 3D like gimmick of it was retarded. It should not have been done. Most games look terrible with the 3D effects on, especially if you're playing like out and about in the day with the glare, like the sun, and all that. It just looks so terrible to the point where it's unseeable. I had to, at least with um. The Gen 7 Pokemon games, they did not do 3D whatsoever because no one really liked it. It was just stupid. I didn't like how big it was. I did not like the analog stick. I didn't like the um, start, select, and home buttons on it. I just did not like the system whatsoever. And if it wasn't for the fact that it was so big, and if it was um, if, if um, it was able to shut, I probably would have gotten the... Um, 2DS instead, but unfortunately I couldn't do that, so I had to deal with the 3DX XL at the time when I got the both of them. So yeah, I don't like the 3DS itself, but I do love the games on it. It's probably in terms of like um handhelds, my least favorite system of all time. Like it just was not good at all. So yeah, that's how it was with the handhelds. I love the Game Boy. I like the design for the Game Boy Advance, but not the games. I love the DS. I like the 3DS's games, but not the system itself. But now we finally get to the main, the final part. The main consoles for Nintendo. Alright, so we started off with Nintendo's first home console. The NES. As it was first released in 1983. And they supported it up to 1995 in terms of selling it. But they actually supported it all the way up to 2007 with um, fixes and replacement parts for the console. So that's really impressive that Nintendo supported this thing all the way up to when the Wii was released. Like, I really wish all video game um, company, um, the Big Free would do this for their system, support them for that long. That is really good on their part. And it sold 61.91 million units, which was number one in Gen 3 as it blew out everything. And, Nintendo, and the NES pretty much saved the video game industry after the North American video game crash of 83. Like, they really... We gotta thank Nintendo for saving video games, because they might not be... Um, video games might not be here today if it wasn't for them. Although they did a lot of bullshit in the process when they released the NES. So, I did not play this thing until 2002 when my granddad, who was not a video game player, but for some reason, he had the NES, surprisingly, and he played it all the time. Because I remember visiting him all the time and watching him and my dad play um golf on it so yeah that was really weird to see it and he actually gave it to me afterwards in 2002 and i just did not really like the thing and it's mostly due to the fact that this system was just too old for me like i'm born in 1993 this thing was 10 years older than me by the time i first got into games it was like the 64 and the ps1 this thing was just too old for me. And I just don't like how the games are done on it. Like, most of them... Video games back then, mostly, were I were um too hard. And you couldn't save. So if you had, like, lost all your lives, it would be game over. Unless that game had a password system. But the password systems in a lot of games were just too inconvenient to really use. So I just did not really have interest in playing those games where they're too hard. Because I hate hard games. And you can't save your progress, so it's like one time, boom, you're done. Like, that just doesn't appeal to me, pretty much. So yeah, I didn't really have any interest in the NES, mostly because I'm just too young for it. And then after the NES came out the SNES, which was released in 1990 and was supported up to 2003. It sold 49.110 million units, and it was number one in Gen 4, Although its sales really got cut off by the Genesis being released at the time since Genesis um, Sega became a main competitor for Nintendo. I never played this thing once in my life. I've never played the SNES. Although, back in 2017, I played one game for the SNES. It was on the computer. It was emulated. 
and that was the SNES port of Civilization 1. And I have to say, as someone who played the original Civ 1, this um, port for it, honestly, was probably the best version of Civ 1 outside of the PC. Graphically, it looked beautiful, it sounded beautiful, it added more countries to it, so you could actually play as Japan, which I played, which you could not play in the original Civilization game. You don't play as Japan on there, but I was able to on here. It was so cool and so fun. I actually might maybe one day see if I can go do a video on that, like a stream play night, because that was so cool. That was the only experience I had with the SNES, but otherwise, I have no real interest in playing it. Like, it's just not appealing to me. Although... I think most of the problems I had with the NES were fixed in the SNES, like with being able to save and all that. But it's just still largely, it's just not appealing to me. As pretty much, it's just too old for me. And then we get to the 64, which was released in 1996 and was supported until 2003. It sold 32.93 million units and was second in Gen 5 as it got destroyed by the PlayStation. That's your fault, Nintendo, in that regard. So yeah. This was the very first system, home system, I ever played. And, as I said before, several years ago for the 64's 20th anniversary, this thing is my favorite console of all time. I love it immensely. I love cartridge games, and I love how it uses cartridge games, although, in the end, it did fuck over the 64 in that regard, since cartridges at the time were more expensive, and they told less, sto less um, data than disc at the time, but I still like it. I just like cartridges more than disc. The controller is nostalgic, although it's kind of ass. The analog stick kind of sucks. The button layout's not really good, and depending on how you play your game, you have to hold the middle section and either the left or the right section of the controller. It's not a good controller overall, but at least it still has a nostalgic effect for me in that regard, but yeah, it kind of sucks. But yeah, I love all the games on it. Like, I think I had every single Pokemon game that was released for the 64. Stadium, Stadium 2, Hey You Pikachu, Snap, Puzzle League. I love them all. Super Mario 64, Monster Truck Madness 64, Battle Tanks. Oh, I love Battle Tanks. I need to play that again eventually soon. That was a lot of fun. The Mario Party games, Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. Like, all of those games, I loved immensely. And there's, I already said pretty much what I had to say about my original video in 2016. I don't really have much else to say about this. Is that, that this thing is the best system ever, and I don't think this is ever going to change. And then afterwards, it was the GameCube, which was released in 2001 and was supported to 2007. It sold only 21.75 million units, which was last place in the Gen 6, which is pretty embarrassing that it sold less than the Xbox. The Xbox, Microsoft's very first system, outsold the long-standing Nintendo franchise. That was bad, and a pretty ba big low point for GameCube at the, um, Nintendo at the time. That is honestly embarrassing. Now, for me, I first got this system Christmas 2001, like a month after the Xbox. And I remember the f it was two, maybe three games, I think, that I got when it came out. Um, Luigi's Mansion, which was the first one, and I f Wave Racer, I think it was called? It was the game involving jet ski racing? I can't remember what it was called. Or something like that, I don't remember. And maybe um, Super Smash Bros. Millie, and if not for Christmas, sometime soon afterwards. But yeah, I really liked the GameCube. The, I did like the design for it. As people, I've seen people like um, Adam Karolik, or whatever his name was, shed on for like it's like childish cute design but I liked it I did love in the back that it had a handle so you could pick it up easily I wish all the other systems especially the bigger ones later on had something like that that would be very nice I don't like the memory cards on it because they were way too small like there were some games I had like I think Coliseum and XD for Pokemon and the Sims where I think it took like up to half of the memory card like I'm not kidding like some games took, like, almost half of the memory card sp storage in a GameCube. That's pretty bad. The controller was kind of weird design. I did not like the, um, C analog stick. That just did not feel good to touch that whatsoever. But other than that, this system was pretty good. Although the games on it 
kind of were not as good as I remember them. Like, remember earlier when I talked about how I did not like the Xbox much at first, but over the years I've grown to like it more? Well, the GameCube had the reverse. I love this thing more. This was second all time in terms of um, Gen 6 for me. It was PS1 number one, then GameCube, and then Xbox. But now over the last few years, it's kind of flipped where GameCube, I think, is now the worst one. Xbox being second. So my fondness for the GameCube has gone down lately over the last few years, which kind of sucks, though, because it was a good system, and it did have a lot of good games on it, too. But unfortunately, I guess nostalgia just isn't saving it like it has for um, Xbox, pretty much. And then we get to the GameCube successor, the Wii, which came out in 2006 and was supported up to 2017, and it sold 101,063,000 units as of it's um the number one selling system in gen 7 and nintendo got kind of lucky that they managed to be the number one selling system of gen 6 i mean gen 7 mostly because of microsoft and sony's fuck-ups but nintendo did a strange thing which unfortunately in the long run fucked them over but at the moment it was good for them in the, at the beginning they focused more on casual gamers with the wii with like the motion controls and Wii Sports. It was not a system pretty much made for like actual video gamers like you or me watching. That was more of the PS3 and the 360. The Wii was more casual. As Nintendo tried to appeal to the more casual audience after the 64 and the GameCube did not do so well. And at first, as you can see in terms of sales, it did work. It worked very well to the point where it was the number one selling unit I mean system in Gen 7. Now, I got this thing when it came out in November of 2006. I liked it. I played mostly Wii Sports with my dad and all that. But I don't really like motion controls by and large. The Wii, for me, got the motion controls right. But other, every other thing afterwards, no. They did not do a good job at it. Now, there are some games that thankfully don't require the controls, which is good because a lot, outside of um, the Wii Sports, a lot of games just did not handle the controls very well with the um, Wii Remote and the Nunchuck. Like, the design of controller just did not work out well outside of, like, Wii Sports and such like that. Which, thankfully, is nice that you're able to have a Pro Controller with it, along with also being able to use a GameCube controller. And that's the cool thing about the Wii is, I used it, honestly, more for um, GameCube games, believe it or not. Like, that was really good of them to add that on, which should be a main feature for all systems that allow you to use, I mean, backwards capability. So I liked it, but um, like looking back on it, it's not as good as it was when it first came out because it didn't really appeal to like video gamers like Yumi. But a lot of games on it were still pretty good, and I did like it that it allowed GameCube support. But otherwise, eh, somewhat. But I still liked the Wii. And then we get to its next successor, which almost killed Nintendo at the time, but then eventually got saved because of the Switch, and that is the Wii U. As it was released in 2012 and was only supported to 2017 and sold 13.56 million units, which was dead last in Gen 8. This, in the last few years, has been Nintendo's low point. Now, why did the Wii U fail so badly? You're probably wondering. It mostly boils down to, because at the time, like, remember I said at the beginning when they went to the casual market in with um, the Wii? By that point, that casual market was dead for them, and they tried to appeal to it again with the Wii U, and it did not work out. And of course, they already alienated, like, video gamers like you and me, at least for most of them, that they had, like, no appeal to the system whatsoever. It didn't help that they kept, I mean, they had the Wii U as a name, because a lot of people apparently thought it was just a, a, an add-on to the Wii and not an actual s system in itself. That wasn't really a good name for it, too, in that regard. And unfortunately, GamePad, which was a unique feature for it, I, that, cost, that made the system cost more, which in the long run probably also didn't help much. So yeah, it was a long list of things that caused the Wii U to flop so badly. Now, the Wii U itself is good. I like the Wii U. There was, like, all the games on I love. I don't really like the GamePad as much. Not that it's bad. It's Kinda too big, for one. Some of the buttons on it were not good, at least for me. But 
if it was smaller, some of the buttons um fixed. And if it possible, maybe made a Wii U that did not require the gamepad. Or some way did not have it required. It actually wasn't that bad. And sometimes, it actually was good for me. Because we ha when we first got this thing, we had it in our living room. So if there was times where I want to play the Wii U while my parents were having dinner in the living room. Because they wanted to watch their TV shows. I could just play the Wii U on the gamepad. So that was nice for it, but there were some things they could have done to make it better. The Wii U was good, but it was mostly because of Nintendo's fuck-ups from, like, the Wii and the previous game systems that caused the Wii U to not do so well. But in terms of itself, it was a good system. And then we finally wrap up the systems with Nintendo's recent one, the Switch, which was released in 2017 and it sold 92.87 million units as of September 30th. 2021 and second place in Gen 8, which is quite impressive because it's catching up to the Xbox, I mean PS4. So possibly, especially since it had a four-year um layered release date, so it's going to last much longer into like Gen 9. This actually could possibly be the highest selling system for Gen 8 at the end in the long run, which is quite impressive for Nintendo to have the worst selling game of Gen 8 and then the highest selling console in Gen 8. And who knows, since this is like their system for Gen 9 too, perhaps, since I doubt they're going to make a new system anytime soon, this could be like their big, this could be their main one to Gen 9 as well, so it's going to be like a crossover in terms of sales as well. Quite interesting to see in that regard. So, <clears throat> so for the Switch, it was a unique system where it was a hybrid. It's both a handheld and a home console, but it's, but it's pretty much, it's pretty much, assumed by pretty much everyone that it's a home console first that's why i did not include the switch Lite on the handheld thing because i view it as a home console first so all the sales like i said are all of them the switch the switch Lite, and the oled which came out after i made this ca card so before i made this card so its sales are not included on here but still quite impressive so i did not get this thing until march 28th of 2021 and that was mostly because there was no main series Pokemon game that appealed to me. Like, all the other systems, Game Boy, I got in from Yellow. The um, Game Boy Advance, I got in from Crystal. The 3DS, I got in from X and Y. I did not get it for, like, um, LGPE and Switch because they were fucking garbage main series Pokemon games. If it wasn't for them being pieces of shit, I would have gotten them for... for um, the Switch. I mean, got the Switch for them. But because of that, I had to wait almost four years before I could get one so I can get new Pokemon Snap. And since then, I love this thing so much. It is so cool. Like, every game on there, I freaking love. I have, like, 30 games on here, believe it or not. I've gotten over 30 games on the Switch, and it's not even been a year since I've had it. Like, the biggest library I have right now of outside of PC. This thing is just insane how much video games I have on it. I, the hand, um, going to dock mode, I mostly play with the Switch Lite, though, the, um, I got the normal Switch mostly for streaming, or if I wanted to play, like, on the, the, um, PC, when I'm on, like, the bike or something like that, but otherwise, I played the Lite, but, the, the um, hand, the hybrid is pretty cool, the one thing I don't like, though, I don't like the controller for the, um, the, um, Switch itself, for me, it's because some games, like, on Mario Party, it handles really, really badly, in that regard. I'm not really liking the plus and minus button for like pause and stuff like that. I prefer like an actual pause and select button. I do not like. The one thing I really hate on the Switch. Is that I fucking hate. The um. That the storage on it. 32 gigabytes. And even with the OLED. 64 gigabytes. I'm sorry but that's too small. For a bare. And I mean this. Bare minimum. You need a terabyte now. There needs to be a terabyte of storage on the Switch. Not no 32 gigabyte. That's way too small. When I have to go out and get a micro SD card just to get more space, you fucked up. You should include a terabyte of storage at a minimum by default in 2022 for video games. That same goes for PC game on PCs as well. That needs to be the standard everywhere for God's sake. It's fucking pathetic that they did that. But other than that, the system is awesome. Oh, and I don't like the, um, how on Nintendo... This is more of a Nintendo thing than a Switch thing. I also don't like that they... 
making you pay for online usage when all the previous systems before they did not, which was a massive plus compared to Sony and Microsoft. But so yeah, that was another fuck up on their part. But the system itself is freaking awesome. And of course, since it just came out only a few years ago, they're going to probably support for quite a while still. So it's going to be probably the highest selling system for Gen 8, maybe? Possibly Gen 9 as well. I'm sure it, in terms of sales, it's almost blown, I mean, tied the um, Xbox Series X and the PS5 in terms of sales since 2020 when they came out. This thing is pretty awesome, but there are some things wrong with it. So yeah, that wraps up the um, games for the Nintendo's home consoles. I don't really care much about the SNES and the NES. I love the, the 64, best system of all time. I like the GameCube, but not as much thinking about it later on. I like the Wii, but not as much thinking about it later on. I liked, I mean, I love the Wii U, and I really love the Switch. So yeah, that's going to wrap up what I think of each console of the big three. Now, we're going to get into a little bit more stuff before I wrap it up. Like, so in terms of like top five, what would I rank my top five favorite systems? This actually got shaken up a lot lately because of the Switch. So for me, number five is the 360. Number four is the Switch. Number three is the PS1. Number two is the PS2. And number one is the 64. And to illustrate it better, I made a tier list of how I rank the systems. In a list of six, Espion I really love, so that includes the Switch, the 64, both Game Boys, even though I mostly I only played the Game Boy Color, the DS, PS1, PS2, PSP, and the 360. A systems I really like, which is the Wii U. Systems I liked, which is the Wii, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, and Xbox. Systems I'm indifferent to, or just eh. The NES, SNES, the Vita, the PS4, PS5, and the Xbox Series X. Systems I do not like, which is the um, 3DS and the PS3 and the systems I really hate, and that's the Xbox One. That's how I rank them based upon my tier list. So yeah. Now if you noticed this, I'm sure you've noticed a trend with all three of the, of the big three for me. That I loved or liked the older Microsoft and Sony systems, but I don't like them or indifferent to them in the in the future versions, whereas the um, Nintendo stuff, most of them I really like. Like, even the worst one on the list, which is the 3DS, I still love the games, it was just I didn't like the console itself. But you see, like the S, of all the systems in the S ranking, half of, over half of them are Nintendo games. The system I really like, all Nintendo. The systems I liked, all but one, Nintendo. Like, Nintendo just blows out everyone at the top, whereas Microsoft and Sony take the bottom tier list. So you probably wondered, why is that? Well, one, a first, a big reason is Pokemon. Pokemon, I am a huge Pokemon fan of. It's my favorite video game series of all time, so Nintendo is going to get a massive bonus in that regard because I am a huge Pokemon fan, and it's exclusive to their games. Two, I am somewhat, although I'm not really that much, I still like pretty much most of the Mario games, pretty much. I don't like the Super Mario games, but I like the 3D-based games. I love the normal, like, 3D games like 64 and Sunshine. I love Mario Kart, Mario Party, and other ones like that. Smash, too. So, they have that bonus, too, which Sony and Microsoft do not have. And Nintendo's fuck-ups don't piss me off as much as like Xbox One's fuck up that really pissed me off pretty much Nintendo's had their own fuck ups but they didn't piss me off as much as like Microsoft's for example and I didn't put it on the list and it's going to probably explain also why I lost a lot of appeal with Microsoft and Sony whereas Nintendo also holds on is is that Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo to some extent don't appeal to me that much like, Nintendo appeals to me mostly because of Pokemon, but there's one, but there's even something that Nintendo doesn't appeal to me of, and there's only one system in the world that does. PCs. Most video games I like are PC-based. Like, Business Sims, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Zoo Tycoon, you name them, all the, bi all the Business Sims, or Sims where you, like, run a life, like Sims... Or like Country Simulators, like Super Power 2, Vicky 2, EU4, the list goes on. All of those games are PC games. 
there's almost none of those games on any of the big three. And if they are, they either suck or are terrible um, imported versions of those games that just aren't good compared to the PC. And my other favorite genre, like MMORPGs like Pokemon or like Monster Catchers, those are almost exclusively to Nintendo or sometimes the PC, like with Monster Hunter recently. So, yeah, like Microsoft and Sony, for example, just don't have games that appeal to me. And along with their fuck-ups lately, I just don't have interest in liking them as much, whereas Nintendo at least still has Pokemon and stuff like that. So that's why Nintendo's rated higher for me compared to the other two. But even Nintendo does not hold a candle to PCs, because PCs have more games I like, I could even play Pokemon on them, I can emulate games on them, and I could do other things like vi making videos, documents, and stuff like that. That's why PC Master Race is superior to you console peasants, and you can't ever refute that. <laughs> so, for uh, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo to some regard, if they really, really, really wanted me to get like, in their good graces again, to maybe even consider getting their systems. There are a bunch of things they're going to need to do to get me. One, don't do fucking stupid shit like with Microsoft did with the Xbox One. Don't ever do stuff like that ever again. Also, start making the games that appeal to me. Like, maybe Sony and Microsoft, maybe you should try and make your own version of Pokemon. Now, of course, even if you did that, you're probably never going to succeed because Pokemon, unfortunately, probably is never going to have an actual rival to challenge it because it's just a whole new thing on its own. Like, it's, like, unstoppable, sadly. The only thing that's going to probably beat Pokemon is um, Game Freak fucking over the series so much that no one wants to play it anymore. Make, like, fix... Hey, here's something that Microsoft and Sony can do. Fix Madden! Fix it so, fix all the franchise mode and stuff like that. Well, that's more of EA's part than necessarily Microsoft and Sony. But pressure them to fix franchise mode so maybe I would go back to playing it every single year. And stuff like that. Although if they did do that, I honestly would probably get for the PC still. Um, make like a um, Monster Truck Simulator game, which none of you guys have. That's PC exclusively, pretty much. Make Find some way to make like a Riggs of Rods or Beam and G level game on your systems. Make me, like, just like man, make a, a, a pro football simulator game that the PC can have just as good. Make, like, a simulator game we run businesses or life or country. Some of those things are on there, but they're just not good to me compared to, like, on the PC. Like, there are things you could do, but you gotta do them. And they've either not done or they have not done enough for me. And another thing, too, I would want to see the video game industry do is they need a radical radical change to make them better because there's so many things wrong with the video game industry that need to be changed at once stop doing dlcs for example that's bad start um thinking about video game preservations so don't like um do like online updates and stuff like that you need to put some you need to have it in some way where people can update the games like 10 20 decades more down the road stop forcing digital on us, I don't like digital games. I only like them on the cons on PC because I can still safely secure those games later on and like copy them and stuff if I need to. Whereas I do not trust digital games when it comes to handhelds and consoles. So fuck digital games. I'm always gonna do physical with them only. So don't force the digital on us. If we want to do physical, let us do physical forever. Stop trying to censor the modding um community. Embrace the modding community. Stop trying to do bullshit copyright crap on us, too. Stop making us pay for online services when they're almost always free on the PC. And especially you, Nintendo, since the DS, 3DS, Wii, and Wii U were all for free, whereas Microsoft and Sony's was not. Make them for free. There is no valid reason for us to charge it. You can fucking eat it, and you know it, and it's not debatable. And more to, like, the video game industry, um, video game developers themselves, like, when it comes to, like, Pokemon, Madden, and unfortunately, Victoria Free, which still hasn't come out yet, and I might need to make a video on that recently because of the fuck-ups they had with it, too. Start asking your fan base about changes to, like, video games before you do them! Because I've noticed that a lot where they just do these things to, like, video games, and then they are surprised that the fandom is angry about it. Maybe ask us first what we think about them before you do it. And stuff like that. There are many more things I don't like about the video game industry. 
that I want them to stop doing now, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. And this video's already gone on long enough as is. So yeah, this was a long video I did. I'm proud I finally got over with and all that. And I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe you should do your own tier list of what you think of all these systems as well. I'll try and post a link to um, the tier list so you can go check it out yourself. So yeah, the 64 is still my favorite console of all time in terms of home consoles. The DS is my favorite handheld of all time. Um, top 5, like I said, number 5, 360, number 4, Switch, number 3, PS2. One, number two, PS2, and number one, 64. Although with the Switch, I got a funny feeling it might shoot up to number three, possibly two very soon if it keeps up the way it's going. But none of them hold a candle compared to the um, free, the PC. The PC is very superior. And of course, to wrap it up, I'm going to mention my tier list one time, one more time before I wrap it up. The S tier are the systems I love. So the Switch, 64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, DS, PS1, PS2, PSP, and the 360. Systems I l like but not love is the Wii U. Systems that I like but not as much as like 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 the um Wii U. The Wii, the Game Boy Advance, the P the GameCube, and the Xbox. Systems I'm eh or indifferent to. The NES, the SNES, the PS Vita, PS4, PS5, and the Xbox Series X. Systems I do not like, the 3DS and the PS3, and the systems I hate, the Xbox One. So, see y'all next time, and like I said, I'm going to be hopefully soon working on my top 10 video games I've played all time, which unfortunately that list is probably going to be inaccurate as hell, but hey, that's the best you could do when, you know, you don't have all this information on top of your head and you're trying to go off based upon 28 years of your life. So, see you guys next time.